Okay, welcome back to the severely underpowered Bearcat project. So uh, I'm starting off here with some firewall work. As you see, I got the uh, old center of it cut out. So I probably would have left it, but the builder of this airplane decided that lightning holes on the front of a warbird that weighs 40 pounds was a great idea. So I couldn't just bolt the motor to the firewall like I could have. Um, so what I'm doing here, since I had to redo it anyways, I'm going to be positioning the actual mount farther back from the firewall. The reason is, um, let me show you here. This motor is super long, and part of the deal is that it's got these bolts on the end of it, which is fine, obviously. But uh, what I end up with here is, so the back of the edge of this cowling slips over the f actual firewall. So really, um, the motor is more like, more like this, and it's a little bit higher up or farther forward so that gets the prop really far from the cowling which is not necessarily a bad thing but I need as much room up front as I can get for my fake radial and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be mounting the motor to where it's inset just a little bit not a ton because I don't have a lot of room here but Probably to where, you know, the actual mounting surface will be just behind the firewall here. So, anyways, I'm trying to get as much length out of this as I possibly can. Look at this thing. It's ridiculous. Anyways, that's what we're doing. I also have to turn the cylinders around, the cylinders and pistons. So, I needed to spin them 180. Same with the piston. The reason is I need the carburetors on top just because... There's really no way to run a servo to the throttle linkage if I run it the way it's set up right now. And it's been proven that you can... Uh, so Peter Goldsmith on his huge P40s has run the same motor. And he's running it. Carburetors on top, mufflers on the bottom. And he says it works great. So, and not only that, but the way I'm going to baffle this motor is I'm going to have the top separated from the bottom. The air is going to be blocked off on the front of the fake radial. And so what I'm going to get is air passing through the fake radial into the top of the motor. And so the carburetors will be able to breathe cool air instead of hot air on this side. And another cool feature, since it has the moving cow flaps, which were tied to the throttle before, and they'll probably continue to be tied to the throttle on the same servo. Oh, I can't close it for some reason. There we go. So when it's at idle, they'll be open. And that'll allow air to pass through the upper section of the cowling. And as the throttle increases, these will close and actually force the air down through the lower exits. So for more cooling, as the power goes up, it needs more cooling. And really, I'm not going to be pushing this motor hard at all. This thing is going to be barely working in this airplane. So I'm not super concerned about heat in this situation. And, you know, we got a radial cowling. So, worst case, where'd my fake radial go? So, basically, what we're going to have here is, um, obviously, i got to do a lot of modifications to get all this to fit. But you can see the cylinders behind this first row. So, it'll have these, all these openings up top for cooling air. And then, every, like I said, everything else will be baffled. And so, all the hot air will come out the bottom and through the lower exit. So anyways, like I said, I have to do a lot of, unfortunately, I gotta cut this up a little bit. Not too bad up top, but where the mufflers go, there's gonna be, for whatever reason, I don't know why they extend them for like this. I'm considering having a friend see if he can cut these and modify them to where these are just, they're just flat right here. So that would save me a ton of work having to chop away a bunch of these cylinders to make all that fit so anyways but yeah you can see actually it works out pretty well how I have uh, the cylinder right behind the um, fake cylinder I'm gonna have to cut away some of this too unfortunately to make all this fit so it's gonna be kind of a bummer because I'm gonna lose a lot of this fake motor 
to make all this work. And you can see how far away the flange is from this. So I gotta, I'm gonna have to shorten this obviously. And it was the hole too small anyways to make it past this giant flange. So there's a number of things that has to happen for this to fit. The first handful of flights will probably just be a block off plate down here and it'll be fully open up here. So anyways, at some point though, I definitely want to get this fake radial in there because it would look awesome. So anyways, that's where we're at and uh, let's get back All to work. All right, so I'm just about ready to bomb the uh, firewall in. See, I've got this section right here kind of hogged out a little bit. That's for clearance for the cylinder on that side. So let me turn this around here. So what I got here is um, essentially three layers of quarter inch birch. This is marine grade ply. This is really good stuff. This is probably what this original firewall is made out of. But you can see there's some discoloration. That's because I've essentially ground this to the angle that I need for my down thrust and side thrust. So you can see the holes are offset. I got some chunks I got out of that one right, that little spot right there when I had to. These holes right here are the clearance holes for the bolts in the back of the motor. So basically, this is gonna go in here like this. I'm gonna bond it in with some epoxy and cavasil. And then on the back side, I'm gonna fiberglass tie everything in. What's cool is that I can tie it into the wing mount, which is super nice, and then also into the existing firewall area. So unfortunately, these parts right here aren't, aren't really a structural section so it's not going to add a bunch of strength to tie it in right here unfortunately this is just like the cooling duct for the exits so there's not really any structure in there but anyways that's what i'm going to do okay so we got the uh firewall all glassed in obviously i just put it in so it'll have to be trimmed but uh it's glassed up into the firewall on all sides and into these corners and onto the, the wing mount. So this is the forward wing mount. It's quarter inch ply. It's got the two uh, blind nuts in there or blind nuts um, for the wing bolts. So it's cool that the uh, this new motor mount ties into that structure which is tied into the wing. That makes me feel a little warm and cozy on the inside and uh, I would like to see more beef up in here into the fuselage but kind of is what it is. I, I, I would have glassed across these pieces here. These are like sheet metal that the guy used into the skin on the backside, but there's a bunch of like some kind of silicone glue that he used to glue in one of the air tanks that was on this side. And it's just kind of a mess. I didn't know how much that would really help. So I didn't want to glass over all that. So I just glassed to them. So hopefully tying into these corners and the main spar the existing firewall and then up into the upper section of the fuselage will be enough. And again, I'm not going to be doing 3D maneuvers. So there's going to be some gyroscopic forces translated into the fuselage from the prop, but not as much as some guy doing snap rolls and stuff like that. So, but uh, I think that motor weighs more than the rest of the fuselage, <laughs> which is kind of how real planes are too. We got a real radial powered airplane and typically the motor weighs as much as the whole fuselage or maybe even more. So that's why the motor is so close to the wing because basically from here forward weighs the same as from here back essentially. So yeah, anyways, so it's all glassed in. Now I'm going to throw some heat on it and hopefully get this kicked off soon because I really want to get this motor mounted up today and all sorted out. I'd like to test running tomorrow on the plane so that's what i'm hoping for um well, obviously a ton of work to do i'm probably going to rip this entire plate out it's i don't like it it's messy and it needs to be done better the only thing that's really on here that needs to be is the servo for the rudder everything else can be um brought into a smaller area and doesn't need to be so big and this is the cockpit floor currently so I want to make a separate piece, probably just a piece across the back that'll hold the servo and the receiver, and I'll probably put both air valves on the same spot. Currently, uh, one air valve is here. That plate is where the throttle servo goes. Um, anyways, I'm going to end up redoing a bunch of stuff on this thing, and this is one of those projects where 
I bought it thinking, you know, it's going to be a flyable airplane and this has just turned into a, a complete redesign and rebuild. So, I mean, I've touched just about every portion of this airplane at this point and redesigned a ton of stuff. So anyways, that's where we're at. Get this thing cured and uh, we'll get this motor mounted up. All right, so got the motor mounted up. Let me uh, pull this prop and cowling off really quick. It's just sitting on there. Prop isn't quite scale. I think if it were 30 inch, it would be scale diameter, which depending on how this prop turns, I might be able to, but not many people make a 30 inch. So 28 might just have to do for now. But uh, yeah, let me show you guys what we got here. All right, so um, everything's still pretty green, but I got it all. I wanted to drill it and get the uh, bland nuts in while it was still green. That way the bland nuts could pull into the fiberglass. So what I did here was it's got two layers of glass over the entire thing tying into the areas around it and then a couple extra layers tying it up here and then a couple extra layers going all the way across here. So it's four layers down here, four up there, and then two across this whole thing. See, we get the bland nuts pulled into the glass because it's still nice and green. And after doing some figuring, um, I ended up having to leave the motor in this configuration with the carburetors on the bottom. Uh, reason is because the cylinders are offset and because of the angle, the side thrust angle that I have in it, if I had run, I had to have flipped the motor over. And so now this cylinder would have been tight over here. And since it's already cocked to the side, I would have had to have pushed the motor out forward to get it all to clear. And I wanted it as far back as possible. So that way the gap between the prop and the cowling wasn't so big. And I needed the motor as far back as possible to get the fake radial in it. So, and after looking at it, the linkage is right here. I should be able to fairly easily get a linkage to come through here to my servo that's over here so i'm gonna leave it like this not super concerned it would have been nice to have had the cool air coming to the carburetors but again this thing is so overpowered that i'm not really worried about getting every last horsepower out of this thing if it's making 75 percent of the power that it would normally make all things being perfect it's still 50 percent more power than it had before so and I think it's going to be all right. Um, and if worse comes to worse, I can make a little plenum right here that force feeds or feeds from the front of the cowling where it'll get cool air. So not super worried about it. And if I have to, I can figure out other ways to make it work. Um, other option actually would be really cool. And I love doing stuff like this would be to duct the wing root scoops, which are for oil cooler and intercooler and carburetor air on the real one and plumb it which i could probably do plumb it to the back wall here and then make a little plenum and actually feed from one of the um, oil coolers on the wing root that would be pretty cool if i could do that if i need to um but uh, anyways i got the motor shimmed to where it's got the right amount of i mean this is all eyeballed but it's got a few degrees of right thrust in it hard to see on camera but it's there and about a degree and a half of nose or a thrust or down thrust. The wing has got a pretty good angle on it. So really coming straight off the firewall is just about right. Um, but it is a little bit more down thrust than it had before with the previous motor. So anyways, let's turn this thing back over. Good grief. So that's that for now. Now I got a, I'm probably going to make a, a little shelf up here to hold the ignition boxes. I'm going to put the weight up front. Um, I was thinking that I was going to have clearance for all the spark plug um, caps, but I think on this side I'm going to end up having to put some small holes in the cowling for the for the spark plug boots to clear. So that's kind of a bummer. This side's fine. But because, again, of the offset of everything and the way it's turned to the side, the way it's all set up, this side's a little bit closer to the cowling, so... Not a huge deal, just be a couple little bumps sticking out of the cowling and all painted blue, so you probably won't even notice them. But anyways, now I need to set up a throttle linkage. I gotta do a fuel tank mount. Like I said, I gotta do a ignition box mount up in here. And uh, yeah, keep on cruising, but it's 
the major work's done here. Now it's all just tinkering, trying to get all the be sorted out. So okay, so I've made a plywood tray for the ignition boxes. These will get velcroed up here. There's one for the front, one for the back row. So yeah, that's it. I need to make a tray for the fuel tank, run the throttle linkage, and then I have to clearance the firewall for the mufflers. Um, after that, uh, it's figuring out the fuel lines. These carburetors have two fuel entries per carburetor. I have no idea what's going on there, and the instructions are kind of terrible. So I got to figure that out, but it uh, shouldn't be too difficult. So, anyways, uh, let's get this tank mounted. Okay, so I had to do some major firewall clearancing for these mufflers. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we got, what we got going on here is uh, you can see where I have clearance for the muffler. Right now I'm working on the um, throttle linkage setup. So right now I've got it set up. And as you can see here, it's tied in with the cow flaps. Had to modify the... Uh, Fuel tray, fuel tank tray, this was excess wood that didn't need to be there. So I had got rid of that so I could get this angle a little bit better. So this has been pretty challenging getting this all packaged, but pretty much there now. So <clears throat> I just need to finalize a couple of things. Um, resin coat the firewall and all the wood in here, that way it's uh, fuel proofed. And uh, yeah, I may end up just removing this completely because where the hot air exits out of this thing is going to be supposed to be right through these slotted areas right here that used to be here. It exits out the belly and the scale oil cooler slash cowling air exit uh, on the belly of the airplane. So it exits out of there, but these two slots are the only thing letting the air out. Well, now they're going to be blocked by the muffler. So I may have just pulling this plate out of here, opening up the whole belly pay whole belly pan area and then that'll allow the air to flow through and out um, so that's probably what i'll end up doing it's kind of a bummer because i wanted this to support the cowling but uh i mean it's got quite a bit that i can mount the cowling to the firewall around all the way around the rest of the way so this may end up just going away but uh anyways yeah it's just about packaged and uh working on it so i got a this piece of 440 all thread that I got carbon toe wrapped around this carbon tube here, fiberglass tube. We got ball links on both ends. So anyways, getting it figured out. And uh, yeah, we're moving along though. I should be ready to fire this thing up tomorrow. So pretty stoked about that. Still a ton of work to do on this airplane, but uh, firewall forward and powertrain packaging is a huge portion of that. So once that's done, the rest of this is kind of walk in the park and then it's uh, dialing, it all, dialing it all in and then flying it, getting it all sorted out. Then it'll be body work, paint, detailing, all that stuff. So anyways, we're moving along though. Uh, pretty good for just the first day of the engine install. So anyways, uh, got to get ready for dinner. But uh, yeah, we'll be back in a little bit. All right. So I have the firewall and everything um, fuel proofed. I got my... Nixon boxes, velcro down, wires all separated. I'm just uh, setting up the kill switch. So I'm just running my ignition wires through here. Got the mufflers bolted in. Everything's installed for a test run. Obviously, it's not installed for flight yet because there's a lot of work to do. Once I run it for a little bit, I'm going to pull the motor back off so I don't get wood dust and crap all over the motor while I work on the rest of the airplane. But uh, fuel tanks in. Um, obviously the uh, <clears throat> throttle push rod is all set up. You can see the linkage set up in there. I got the uh, chokes tied together. So once I actually get the cowling on this thing, I'll have a little arm that goes through the bottom of the cowl that I can open and close the choke with. I don't want to put a servo on it. It's kind of a waste. So like I said, it's got to hook up the kill switch and uh, 
set up a battery in this thing. Need to get the throttle servo adjusted on the radio and this thing will be ready to fire up. So I will need to clearance the bulkhead on the belly pan of the wing. So I'm going to have to cut a bunch of that out of it. So <clears throat> the mufflers were clear for one and for two to get good airflow through the exit. So anyways, that's it for tonight, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the underpowered Bearcat video. And uh, tomorrow we're going to fire this thing up. So we'll have some video of this thing running, hopefully. So, And uh, that thing is going to be scary to hand prop. <laughs> so anyways, we'll see you guys in the next one.